Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and I've got an update for you on my series looking at bringing in free over-the-air television to my home. So a few months back when my broadcasters started sending out their new ATSC 3.0 signals, I found that if I put a antenna up on a tripod, I could actually pick everything up and I was getting a good signal but not a great one. So the antenna man, who you can find on YouTube, recommended that I pick up this Televise Dat Boss antenna, and this one on the tripod fared a lot better. And now I've got that antenna up on the roof because all of my experiments gave me a lot of confidence to know that if I spent the money to get that antenna up there, we're gonna get this to work. And sure enough, it is working. And what I wanted to do in this video is just show you how things are going here so far. Now that I've got the antenna permanently mounted up there and what I'm using now to bring those TV channels into my home. And I'm going to give it a good month or two and if it all works out, I'm probably going to get rid of my cable subscription completely, subscribe to a few of the cable channels that we like to watch through their services and save a bunch of money in the process thanks to this antenna now being up on the roof. We're going to explore this topic and see how things are going here in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the antenna and the installation with my own funds. However, you will see me talk about the HD Home Run Network TV tuner, and those tuners were provided to the channel free of charge by Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run, and they're also an occasional sponsor here on the channel as well. So let's get into it now and see how my TV is working out now that I can get free channels over the air. Now, I did want to share a couple of resources that I talked about before, but I think we're really instrumental in getting this project off the ground. Uh, the first is antennaweb.org. And if you type your home address into this, they'll show you where all of your TV transmitters are located relative to where you live, so you know what direction to point your antenna to. And in addition to that, you'll also get an idea as to how big of an antenna you might need to receive those TV channels. And if you're not sure about what kind of antenna to get, the best resource I have found, and many of you have found as well, is the Antenna Man. And you can follow him on YouTube and watch some of his review videos of various antennas. But he also has a very affordable service where he will take a look at your location and make a recommendation of the antenna that he thinks is the best fit for where you are. And will give you some advice as to how high to mount it and where to point it. And the advice he gave to me was dead on, and I think he will be for all of you as well. So if you are uncertain, definitely check him out. One of the challenges that I ran into in this installation process, at least for me locally, is that there really isn't a provider of TV antenna services. Uh, so you could, I guess, call Sling TV or maybe a satellite TV contractor. They have some experience in putting antennas up and pointing them. But generally, in my neck of the woods, there really wasn't any option. I went out in all my local Facebook groups asking if there are any antenna installers around, and I got crickets, but a few folks asking me to let them know if I found anybody. So what I ended up doing was calling a high school buddy of mine who is a home improvement contractor, a very talented one at that, and he said he could take on the project, which he did. And we did get a couple of little hiccups along the way here as we were putting things up. The big issue we ran into with this antenna is that it is so large that the initial uh, pole that we had selected for it wasn't rigid enough to keep it steady. It was kind of moving around a bit in the wind, a bit too much for my comfort, especially if we had a windier day than the day we were installing things. It was really moving around just with a gentle breeze up there. And I'm at the top of a pretty high hill, so we get a good amount of wind up here. So we ended up taking this pole down and putting up a much more rigid one that was though a little bit shorter and so although my antenna is clearing the roof line, it is just barely clearing the roof line. And I, we'll see what happens, but I think we might have to come back and get it up a little higher uh, when the foliage comes in. But we'll see what, what happens when we get to that point in the project here. But definitely uh, get a rigid pole for this antenna because it is large and it's going to move around quite a bit in the wind. And I did hear from a bunch of you who were concerned about the wind load capacity of this antenna. So we're gonna put it through the test in the real world here. And when we get one of those big windstorms, I will come back and let you know how it did. And hopefully it will still be up there on the roof. Now inside my house, I'm using their included amplifier. Now, as you can see, I've got four cables plugged into this right now, and I'll go through each of them here. Uh, so this of course is the power cable for the amplifier. The middle cable here is what's coming in from the antenna outside. 
and I purchased a weatherproof, UV-proof, fireproof, outdoor-rated cable for uh, this kind of purpose. It even has a little gasket on it for uh, keeping the moisture out of the connector. So that's on the outside. I got a 25-foot cable. Because I'm using these HD home run tuners, I can put the tuners pretty much where the cable comes in and then get everything out onto my computer network. So everything in my house that has a screen can tune into television whenever we want. So that is why I like using these network tuners. It makes wiring up the rest of the house a lot easier, especially if you have an existing uh, wired network in your home. Now, these other two cables are going out to the HD home run tuners. So the white one here is going out to my ATSC3 tuner, and the black one here goes out to a uh, ATSC 1.0 HD home run tuner. And one of the things that I like about the Televi system here is that you can get two outputs from the amplifier here. So you don't have to do any splits. You've got it all built in. And I'm able now to run two different tuner boxes off the same antenna with no loss of signal to either one of them. Now I have an HD home run Flex 4K here on the right. This one has two ATSC 3 tuners and two ATSC 1 tuners. Although I think if you had four ATSC 1 channels to tune in, it will actually use these ATSC 3 tuners to do the other two. Uh, but normally the way this works is it'll put the ATSC 3 on the first two and the ATSC 1 on the second two. And then the other tuner here is the HD Home Run Quattro. Although it looks the same, this is not an ATSC 3 tuner. And what this does is it tunes in four different over-the-air broadcasts simultaneously. So basically right now I can bring in two ATSC ch uh, 3 channels simultaneously and six of the ATSC 1 channels as well. And one of the nice things about this antenna is that I pick up far more channels than I ever have here. So why don't we take a look and see what I'm getting. So here are the list of channels that I'm able to pick up on the ATSC 3 tuner, the HD Home Run Flex 4K. I'm getting a total of 62 channels. Most of these are ATSC 1 channels, and this is more than I was getting when we tested this on the tripod earlier. So we're definitely picking up a few more up on the roof there. I should note, though, that a couple of the channels that it picks up, like this one, are coming in from the Springfield, Massachusetts area. And although the tuner can find them, uh, they don't often work reliably because they're a bit too far away. But it's still seeing them, and a bulk of the channels that I watch from my home state of Connecticut are all working very reliably. Now, at the bottom here, you'll see all of my local broadcasters on the HEVC video standard. And these are the ATSC3 broadcasts. And these are all working great. And what's nice about how the broadcasters have rolled out ATSC3 in my state is that they're all coming off the same tower on the same frequency. So I can get them all now. And if you look through the list here, you won't see all of them on this list because they're all coming in off of different transmitters on the ATSC1 standard. And some of them are just too far away. I've got terrain in the way. Uh, in one instance, my ABC affiliate is coming in from the west while others are coming from the north. So this is really allowing me to get everything now off of a single antenna, whereas I could not before. And I'll show you the strength of those in a minute. Now, this is the other tuner. This is the ATSC1 tuner. And you can see we're getting less channels here because it doesn't get the uh, HEVC channels. But we're getting pretty much the same thing here on both out of that antenna using the amplifier. So let's take a look at signal strength now. I've got four different broadcasts being sent to devices around my house at the moment. And what I'm gonna do here is pull up this really helpful utility that runs in Windows that is part of the HD Home Run software package. And as you can see here, we've got my uh, Flex 4K tuner and each tuner gives us a little status page here as to how well it is getting its signal. So you can see here, uh, the signal quality percentage is about 64% or so. When I tested this on the tripod over the summer, I was about 7 or 8% higher, although I'm finding at different times of day, the signal quality is a little better or worse. So we're in the worst of it right now, kind of in the yellow zone here, but in the evening it gets better. And of course, there are atmospheric conditions that can impact these signals. Um, but so far, I haven't had any drop-offs, and it's been largely over 50%, comfortably over 50% 
most of the time. I suspect that if I could get the antenna up a little bit higher, it might improve this, but I think for now, I'm gonna leave it as is until I see the impact of the foliage that is due to come out pretty soon, uh, which will determine whether or not we do need to raise the antenna up a bit. Uh, so that is one of the ATSC 3 tuners. Here is another one. Now remember, both of these channels are coming off the same transmission. They're just different digital uh, packages embedded inside of that transmission. So these will largely be identical here because we are tuning into the same exact frequency. Now on this tuner, we have an ATSC one broadcast, this again from my CBS affiliate that is very far away that we really couldn't pick up very well before. And this one is doing just fine as well. Uh, you can notice though the difference in bit rate. So we're running at about eight to nine and a half megabits per second. That very same broadcast on ATSC3 is about half of that with better image quality. And we talked a little bit about that in the last video. It just shows you how technology moves quickly and standards move slowly, but you get a much better quality image for far less bandwidth uh, with the ATSC3 standard, which is why it's such a big deal. What I found of interest though, is that the ATSC broadcast runs about 10 or 15 seconds or so behind the ATSC1 broadcast. So there might be some additional encoding going on or something happening with the broadcasters that uh, makes it so these broadcasts are not coming in at exactly the same time. So the DVR cushion might need to be set to accommodate for that. Now this tuner is the Quattro tuner that I have upstairs. And as you can see here, also tuned into that far off CBS affiliate, we're getting very similar performance here. So I'm pretty confident that uh, so far this is working out really well. But again, I'm concerned about the foliage growth and whether or not I may have to go up a little bit higher but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it a little bit later. So I'll keep you posted on how things are going, but right now it's looking really good. And I think if it continues in this way, I should be able to cut the cord officially after all these years talking about it and save myself some money and have a better control over what I watch. Incidentally, the local broadcast TV fee on my cable now is well over $20 a month on top of what I pay for the cable subscription. So this will save quite a bit of money and everything that comes in over the air comes in free of charge. Now there's an HD home run app available for most of the major streaming platforms out there. And if your smart TV is not directly supported, there's a good chance something you have plugged into that television that does work. I've had a lot of success with Apple TV, with the Fire TV boxes, along with my Xbox and a few other things as well. So I haven't yet found a screen that can't play my live television in some way uh, from the HD home run system. And it's also an open platform. So Plex and MB and Insta TV and channels, which are all third party apps also work with the HD home run system. And I would definitely suggest checking out a few of my earlier videos where we dive into a little bit more detail about how all of that works. But by and large here, things are going great so far. My wife likes to watch the news in the morning while we're getting the kids ready for school. No hiccups, it's been pretty much flawless uh, as we are experimenting here with over the air television. So my use case here is probably one of the tougher examples of getting over the air broadcast to work. And now uh, they are working very well here thanks to the shift to ATSC3. So I'll be back with more, uh, including how the antenna does in the wind, but also how it does when the leaves come back on the trees. So stay tuned, I live in the forest, so we're going to uh, be talking a little bit more about the performance of this antenna as the weeks progress here. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zyben. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.